our stingless bee family. Now, for those of you who don't know, inside of this beast of a giraffe skull that I have so friendly, well, become so friendly with, is a whole little colony of stingless bees. Now, they are on this side. Sorry, Ferg, I placed it the wrong way. There we go. Inside there is where our stingless bees are living. And given that it is quite a warm afternoon, I wonder if there's not going to be some activities. I'm going to try to get the microscope inside there and see if there aren't any stingless bees buzzing around in there. I know some of you have been wondering about them and whether they are around. Now I'm going to try to get a little bit of sunlight. Let's see. What do you think, Fergus? What's the bets here? Oh, I'm not as good as this as James is. James is very good at hand-holding the microscope. Oh, look, there we go. We do have a stingless bee. Now, hold on. I'm going to try and see if I can't get a little... A little bit of a better view. Sorry, it's a little bit blurry for now, but we'll get there, don't worry. But there we go. See its legs? So it's coming out slowly. Like I said, when it's hot like this, you will find that they are a little bit more active. Now, where have you gone? I'm trying to just angle it a little bit better. Now, hopefully, our stingless bee will come up again, because that was pretty cool. Now, I'm just, like I say, trying to get the focus right. But did you see it there? You can imagine how small that is, because it is... Um, there we go, it's back again. Hopefully, there we go. Now I've got it. There it is, look at it. Hello. Welcome to the world. Sorry that we are disturbing you. But there we go, there's our stingless bees. Now you can see that they're quite small and they'll live inside of this giraffe skull. And they've been in here the whole summer. They've found a perfect place to make a home. They've built their nest coming out of the sort of base of this giraffe skull. And inside there will be the perfect sort of nooks and crannies for this particular be to survive and there will be a whole host of them in there and like I said when it gets warm like this they're far more active so they'll come out and they'll go and feed around and then they come back into this and they'll spend the night inside here. So James Richards you are actually wanting to see the stingless bees well there we go they're out and about and moving around they're actually quite cute every time I've looked for them they haven't been moving around so to actually see one this afternoon has been really cool and look at those jaws can you see them amazing that's so cool. I love this microscope. This microscope is the most fun thing ever. It's like being a kid again. You're just able to see all the wonders of nature that you can't normally see. Oh, it's gone away again. I think it's a little bit shy. So, Kurt, you're wondering if a stingless bee is the same as a drone? Well, I'm not sure, actually. I don't really know the answer to that. I'm going to have to try and investigate a little bit. Like I say, James is more the king of the stingless bees because he's been seeing them a lot more. Every time I try and look at them, I can't get them. So I'll try and investigate and see if it is indeed the exact same thing. I would imagine that it might be, but we'll just check it and see. Like I say, I do have access to some insect books while I'm in the tent so we'll definitely try and see if I can't sort that out now unfortunately I've got the focus all wrong again it's my fault I've moved them there we go yeah, that's better now we can actually see you look at the little antenna poking out and I think it's very curious as to what this big thing is around its entrance to its nest with the light shining in now, it's quite difficult because they're moving around so much that I've got to try and kind of change the focus. Now I know what it's like to be a cameraman. You guys do a good job, Ferg. Well done. This is a lot harder than it looks, that's for sure. There's a little leg that's sticking to the side. And you can see how those fine hairs work. We were looking at the hairs of the spider and we're saying that it'll help them to traverse their web. And you can actually see how those hairs on the bee are helping to, for it to traverse up the sides of this thing. This little tube that they have. There we go. So stingless bees, you're wondering how they defend themselves. Well, for them, their biggest way of defense is to just get away from a predator. So you'll find, unfortunately, unlike a normal bee that will be able to sting and, and to maim its prey, these guys don't have that option. So they're going to have to try and fly. And that's why they're so skittish. You'll find that they stay inside structures. You find them naturally in these skulls. You'll find them in fallen over wood pieces. And they live inside there. And they'll only come out every now and then when they come out to feed. But otherwise, it's inside there and stay hidden as much as possible to stay out of the way of predators. I've got to change the focus again. That's the only problem with the microscope if there's depth of field on it is not very good. I would actually would love to know what the depth of field is on this. But there we go. Look at the big eyes that they've got. So you can imagine how well this insect sees. When you see eyes like that, then you know that they can see very, very well indeed. 
Right, now this giraffe is not a carnivore and the one that I, the stingless bees are living in, but it is absolutely eating my legs at this stage because I'm resting on it and the teeth are a lot sharper than they look. You would think that a herbivorous animal wouldn't actually hurt one's leg, but with the weight of the skull, it seems to actually be eating away at my legs itself. Now the stingless bees have disappeared, so I'm going to lift that up, but I was just saying now that